Hey guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are joining me for the first time today. My name is Lucy and today I have finally filmed my most requested video ever. Today's video is all about how I take and edit my Instagram pictures. Now, disclaimer, I know I do say this a few times throughout the video, but editing your pictures is definitely not necessary. If you are confident enough with your content that you feel you don't have to edit them, then please don't ever feel pressured that you need to edit them because you definitely don't. I personally like to edit them just to sort of enhance the photo. I like to make the colors look a little bit bolder, make the eye look pop a bit more, but it definitely doesn't mean to say that I can't do the makeup because I think it's obvious by my videos and stuff that I can do it. I just really like to use the editing features to enhance. Sorry in advance for the voiceover being quite quick. I do feel like I had to skip through a few things that I wanted to say in order to keep up with the voiceover to the video, if that makes sense. So if there's anything that I didn't quite explain enough or you're a little bit confused about, then please don't hesitate to comment below, ask me your questions or um, give me a message on Instagram or something like that so I can answer it in a little bit more detail because I know I was going quite fast with the voiceover at some points. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. I hope you guys enjoy and you learn some new tricks and let me know what you think. So my current lighting setup when I take my photos is that I sit in front of a softbox light which is from New Year and also a ring light which I believe is also New Year but I can't be too sure because it was given to me as a present a few years ago. I also then sit in front of a white wall. This is just a painted white wall. It's not a backdrop or anything and yeah that's my lighting. When it comes to actually taking my close-up eye photos, I literally just use the backhand camera of my iPhone 10. I go into the iPhone camera app and flip around my camera and auto-focus onto my eyes. Then what I like to do is manually zoom in with two fingers so that I know my eyes are in shot. And then literally I just spam the button. Um, I just like to take loads and loads of photos so I know I'm at least gonna get one that I like. And then I like to go into my camera roll and flick through them and favorite the ones that I like the angles of the most and that really is it for taking my photos it's very very straightforward and really not a lot of magic to it um but I definitely recommend auto focusing onto your eyes because I really feel like that sharpens up the image and puts the focus on your eyes then what I like to do is I take my photos straight into the Facetune 2 app so there is two different Facetune apps there's Facetune 1 and Facetune 2 um I can't remember if it was free when I got it uh, you may have to pay for it, but it's definitely a really, really great app and it does everything you could want an editing app to do. So I'm just choosing between the three favorites that I favorited, which one I'm actually going to use. And when I figure out which one I'm going to go for, I always start by cropping the image. So I like to flip it round. I just prefer my angle being from that side. And whilst I'm there, I might straighten up the image and twist it and rotate it slightly if I need to. But this one was quite a good sort of uh, rotation anyway so I like to just sort of leave it where it is but crop the image in so that you don't have so much sort of forehead and background. Once the image is cropped the first tool that I'm going to go in with is the paint tool and I'm going to use the picker to select the lightest part of my skin color from the middle of that cut crease. I'm very pedantic when it comes to colors and I like the colors to show up as bright as they possibly can be which they sometimes can get lost when you take your pictures or when it transfers onto the camera as opposed to what you see in the mirror. So I just like to sort of brighten up that area and make it look a little bit more visible as there are some patches that come off a bit darker than others. So I just like it to be sort of the same color across that whole area. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Then I'm gonna down the opacity to about 50%. Um, it's not too obvious, but it's obvious enough that you can definitely tell it's there. Then I like to go in for the refine tool, which is actually really cheeky. It's a tool that can reshape your features so I just like to use this on my eyebrow and basically fluff it up a little bit it's not a tool that everyone
everyone will use, but I certainly like to use it just to shape my eyebrow the way that it's not naturally. Then I'm gonna go ahead with the smooth tool. Now I never really go over the top with this tool. I just think it makes the photo look a little bit more uh, presentable, I guess, when you slightly smooth out your skin. I know not everyone does this and it's definitely not necessary, but I just personally think it makes a nice little difference to the image. And I only really do around my nose and maybe across my forehead. And then I lower the opacity to about between 50 and 70. So here's me showing you the before and afters so far. It's only minor changes so far, but you can tell it starts to make the photo look a lot better. Now I'm gonna go back to the paint tool and I'm gonna select the white color from down at the little sidebar. And I'm just gonna color in the background. There's only a small amount of background, but it definitely makes the colors from your eyes pop more when the white in the background is a little bit more prominent. So I'm just gonna go ahead and color that and then just erase the white from my face, um, which obviously I didn't mean to put there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and choose the black color and basically color in my lash line and color in the edges of my liner. As you can see, they have come up very, very sort of gray and not as opaque as they looked in the mirror. Um, so I just like to go ahead and use the black tool just to sort of color that in and deepen it up and make it look a little bit more effective because at the moment it's very, very washed out by the camera and the lights. So that's what I'm doing here. I just like to zoom in nice and close so I can get very very close to the black edges and I'm just going to continue to do that across both eyes and anywhere where there is dark colors showing really. Now I'm going in for the same paint tool and the picker tool again, and I'm gonna pick out that beautiful lilac shade from my eyeliner. And again, this really isn't a necessary step, but I like to do it just because I like the fact that my eyeliner will be all one color rather than sort of patchy parts of lighter and darker. Um, it really doesn't make a huge difference, but I use the skin tool and I'm just picking out that lilac shade and just gonna color over the liner slightly. And you can kind of see the before and afters when I. I click the button there. Then I like to go back in for the paint tool again and the skin tool this time. And I'm picking out a dark gray shade. Um, well, I guess dark gray or black will do. And I'm just sort of gonna go over the edges of my eyeshadow slightly. Again, it's very, very washed out from being in front of my light. So I just like to darken up the edges of my eyeshadow ever so slightly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint around those edges and then lower the opacity again, just so it's not super, super obvious, but it definitely um, makes the, picture a little bit brighter and the eyeshadow a little bit bolder. These are all just very, very small steps that aren't necessary, but they definitely make the picture stand out a little bit more if you were to scroll across it on your feed. Once I've done that, I'm going to go back in with the paint tool again, and I'm choosing a lighter gray color this time from the skin section. And I'm just literally going to paint over my eyes ever so slightly only to bring out the blue in my eyes. You can also do this by using the detail tool um, instead of the paint tool, but I like to do it this way just to make my eyes look a little bit more blue. And that's essentially most of the editing that I do for my close ups. Oh wait, no, I forgot one of my most favorite steps. Um, once I've finished in Facetune, I will then go out of the app and into an app called Aviary. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but it's something like that. And in this app, I really love the blemish tool. This blemish tool is honestly a godsend for small, annoying little dots in your picture. Like if you've dotted your mascara slightly out of place or you've got an annoying pimple on your forehead or something like that, it's honestly a godsend for stuff like that. Um, all you do is tap over the areas that you wish to sort of disappear and they literally just vanish into thin air. So any freckles that you don't like or any spots or any blackheads or anything like that, you can really easily remove them with this tool. And it's honestly just the most amazing thing. So once I finished in Facetune, I go over to this app and I just tap over any areas that are annoying me and then I will take it to Instagram. 
Wait, never mind. I forgot there is one more step before it goes into Instagram, and that is just to watermark my pictures. I only really watermark my close ups because people love to steal other people's pictures and post it as their own nowadays. So I just like to use the Snapseed app. And in this app, you upload your photo. You can go down to the text tool and write in your username. And I like this app because you can change it to different fonts. You can move it around wherever you fancy, and you can also lower the opacity where it's it's not going to be edited out or cut out and then yeah then it can go into Instagram. So Instagram is the place where I like to play around with the brightness of the photo. I normally start by going in with the saturation tool. I will up that just a slight few notches so it makes the photo a little bit brighter. Then I go in for the sharpen tool and normally put that somewhere between 10 and 20. Then I will play around with the highlights, the shadows, the contrast. There's honestly so much you can do with the Instagram editor and it's a really great app for actually changing the sort of warmth of your photo. I think that if you don't use the in-app editor already you definitely should because I find that it makes such a difference to the general look of your photo and then I'll just save that into my drafts and it's good to be posted. So moving on from close up photos to my full face photos, to be honest, the editing process is very, very similar, but there are a few things that I do on my full face pictures, which are slightly different. But here I am starting off with the smooth tool. Um, again, I don't go OTT with this tool. I just like to use it on the areas which look a little bit patchy or dry in the photo. So around my sort of cheek area and on my forehead and above my lip and on my chin. Um, but I really don't go overboard with this tool. Then I'm just going to go and move on to the eyes. So I'm starting with the exact same tool that I used at the beginning of my close-up picture. I'm using the paint tool and I'm just going to fill in the middle part of my sort of cut crease area to make it seem a little bit bolder and stand out a bit more. Then I'm going to go ahead again with the paint tool and onto the darker black shade. And I'm going to start by filling in my lash line and the eyeliner sort of... Um, lines again which I did previously as well and just going around the outside of the eyeshadow again to deepen that up it's not because these colors weren't dark in person they were I just think that when you're in front of bright lights it really washes out the image and the colors of the image so that's why I like to go in and just touch these up to make them seem a little bit bolder in the final picture then this is what I was explaining earlier about the detail tool. I like to take the detail tool and just sort of draw over my eyes, also over my freckles on my nose and also on my lip uh, lip gloss because it makes everything just pop a little bit more. It makes my freckles stand out. It makes my eyes stand out and my lip gloss look a little bit shinier. Then I'm going to go for the whiten tool and of course just ever so slightly whiten my teeth and also I like to use this to whiten up the background as the background of my full face pictures can often look very blue toned and I want them to look a little bit more white. So I just like to use this tool to color in the background and make it a little bit more neutral rather than cool toned. Then going back in again with the paint tool and I'm selecting a plum sort of shade from the skin section and I'm just going to use this to go over the blusher and bronzer area of my cheek. Again, this is because it's washed out in the bright lights so I'm just using that to bring the colour back to my cheeks. Now I'm going to go in with the conceal tool and this is something that I don't always do. I only do it if I'm feeling very, very, very fussy, but I will go over the edges of my eyeshadow really, really, really lightly and just sort of conceal them very, very lightly to make the blend look a little bit more seamless. Um, but to be honest with you, it doesn't really make a difference at all. So it's not a necessary step. Then I'm going back in with the black paint tool and again, going over that eyeliner just to darken it up and make it a little bit more obvious because it is very very washed out in the photos. Once I've finished using the paint tool to colour in my eyeliner, I like to go back in with the paint tool with a lighter shade and I like to go over the top of my highlighter on my cheeks, sometimes my inner corner and on my nose as well, just to really make it pop. You can see it's not a huge drastic difference, but I really think it helps to just make it stand out a little bit more. 
Now what I'm doing is moving down into the edit tool and I'm going to start by going in with the light section and basically just brightening up the entire image. Then I will go over to the color tool and just sort of make the colors pop a little bit. And then again, just like the Instagram editor, I'll mess around with the highlight, lower the shadows, um, sometimes play with the contrast and everything like that. And this just really makes the image seem a little bit brighter and the colors to pop a little bit more. Now I'm going in for that cheeky reflection fine tool like I did on my eyebrow earlier and I'm really just using this to even out the line on my other eye in this photo. For some reason it was really really bugging me and I just wanted it to look a little bit more straighter because it was very very crooked. Um, again that's just me being very paranoid about straight lines. Not everyone will do this but I like doing it so I do it. Now I'm going to go back for the paint tool and like I did earlier just go over the lilac areas of my eyeliner again. I just like it all to be one colour rather than patchiness. Not very necessary and not very obvious but to me it makes a difference so I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> To really finish off the picture, I always like to go into the light effects section and pick out one of the light effects and you can rotate it, make it bigger, make it smaller, focus it into one area. Um, I just really like doing this because I think it adds a little bit something more exciting to the photo. Often the photos can look quite dull um, and I like the fact that the lighting makes it look a little bit more sparkly and a little bit more exciting to look at. So I like to do this. I like to make it a bit bigger and just overlay it in the corners of the photos and then downplay the opacity so it's not very obvious but you can definitely tell there's a little bit of a sparkle there and this is the before and after you can see it's really not huge huge differences I know I keep saying that but it really is minimal things that make the overall effect so much more exciting what I do once I'm finished on Facetune is I take the photo into the app Lightroom, which is an Adobe app. And this is a really great app for sharpening your image. Um, you can sharpen it without it looking like too sharp, if that makes sense. Although I do recommend only sharpening it to a maximum of about 40 or 50 if you're going to put it into Instagram. Otherwise, Instagram really kills the quality of the photo. Um, you can also do lots of lighting features with this app. You can make the vibe higher, you can do the temperature, you can make it light, change the exposure, you can do basically everything that the Instagram editor does but slightly better. Um, but yeah, it's a really good app for changing the colours and making it brighter and making it darker and stuff like that. So sometimes I'll go into this app and play around with the features in here before I put it into Instagram. Um, and yeah, it's just a really good app. Okay guys, and that is my finished editing, taking photo routine. I will insert on screen here the before and the after pictures so you can compare them. I know I said it like 20 million times throughout the video, but they are not huge, huge changes. They're small things that I sort of get irritated at when I look at my pictures, I zoom in and I just like to change and alter a couple of things, but it definitely doesn't mean to say that I can't do the makeup. I really hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, then please make sure to leave a big thumbs up, leave me a comment down below and also subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I know I've been pretty inactive here on YouTube for the last few months. So if you do like keeping up with my content, but you're missing out on my YouTube videos, then please make sure to come and follow me over on my Instagram as well, which is LSG Makeup. I'm definitely a lot more active over on there than I am here on YouTube. Like I said at the beginning, if there is any steps that you're a little bit confused about or maybe I talked too fast through it, then please make sure to leave me a comment if you are confused or have any questions. I'm gonna leave this video here, but thanks so, so much again for watching and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye.